So this week in the Business English courses, we have been looking at writing an email at work. Now, I know that when we talk about writing, we have this almost negative aspect to thinking about writing. And I know that most of you are worried about um, spending too much time writing because you because I've also said how easy it is to concentrate on writing because when you write you don't have to think quickly you're in front of a computer you can use dictionaries etc but I've also seen some of the emails and communications that you have been writing so I thought let's do a, just a, a very quick overview of writing an email and how important actually that is in the workplace. So we basically use writing for communicating all aspects of our job from sending an email, preparing a report, presentation slides, letter, CV, job reviews, customer, client communications, etc. In fact, most of what we do at work actually involves writing of some sort, even entering in data into the company SAP, sorry, that's supposed to be the SAP system, let's fix it right now, or similar, is actually a means of writing. So it's important that the writing that we do has some sort of uh, structure, let's call it structure. So the habit and method of writing in a foreign language is just as important as writing in your own native tongue, especially when the foreign language is used for your work situation and especially when it's going to become 100% the new language of communication. Therefore, it's important to learn the proper and correct uses of writing business communications. In this week's lesson, we looked at some research and I will actually gave you some links to research and study on uh, how to write uh, the best methods of how to write emails. These are the links which you have, this is the actual, I'm reading the actual uh, PDF that you have with you and so I'm just going over it really quickly um, so that you do have something to also listen to. So the post-study task, the writing activity, so once you have studied the information from the links, you will be required to write three emails and submit the emails in the Google document for your group. On the day of the class, during the face-to-face -face class and not before. What that means is that I want you to write these three emails, emails, but I don't want you to do what you've been doing until up until now, and that is as soon as you write the answers to your homework or quizzes, you're writing them in the Google document. What I want you to do is to bring them to class on the face, uh, bring them to class during the lesson in of next week, and. What we're going to do is actually uh, exchange, uh, bring them printed obviously, and we're going to exchange them and we're going to, each one is going to correct the other, if that makes sense. It's going to be a sort of a peer feedback. I do explain it here. See, we will look at the emails one by one and make our comments. The group participants and the teacher together in a collective marking with no actual real mark. We're not going to give a, a mark 1 out of 10. What we're going to do is look at the spelling, the structure, the format, the layout to see if you have understood from the study material uh, and remember, this is only one of the sheets. I've actually given you a second sheet. So those of you that haven't seen uh, the second sheet, please do let me know because uh, we'll send that out in the email. In this way, what I was trying to say is we'll be able to discuss varying opinions and be able to understand how we can improve our own communication skill in writing emails, helping each other out. And once we do, when we do that, when we do help each other out, I think that's where the true learning happens. When we can see errors in someone else's or when we can see things that we would have liked to have, do, to, to have done in our email or in our work, then we actually uh, start to formulate a pattern of learning. 
So let's have a look at the writing activity that you have to do. There are three emails that, the emails that you need to write this week. I know it sounds like a lot of work, but we only have a one hour lesson a week. And in that one hour lesson, it's really difficult to get to make sure that you actually learn something extra that we actually take one small step forward so it's really not enough we need and we've we've discussed this in the, the beginning that uh, we opted for the one hour lesson in order to avoid taking you away from your desks for long periods of time but you needed to um, to commit to working at home or in your spare time, at least another hour at home, at least, if not two. So these three emails may seem like a lot of work, but they're really not because these are these come from the um, the student um, analysis uh, documents that I gave you in the beginning from the uh, Google form that you actually participated in. So most of you already are doing this sort of work every day. So the first act the first email uh, email number one uh, you have to write your supplier is in another country was supposed to send you a reply in relation to the product or service in your department. Here you can actually um, insert something that is relative to your own work. Example, um, if you are a hardware engineer and you would like to know when the components you ordered will be delivered. It's, uh, email number two, your colleague has sent his reply in relation to a team project mistakenly to another colleague in another plant, thereby, thereby unveiling the private details that should not have left your department. You are the team leader. How will you deal with the situation? You can either choose to write to the colleague who made the mistake or to the other colleague who received the email by mistake. Or, if you like, you can write to both. That would be obviously two emails. Remember, this would be similar to a confidential uh, document going into the wrong hands. Um, so it's also probably company policy here. You'd have to take into account all sorts of things. Um, Email number three, the manager in charge of your department has denied anyone taking a holiday on Friday after the public holiday on Thursday, therefore avoiding the chance of a long weekend. But you had planned a special trip and had already made the request in writing for the holiday many months ago. Therefore, you need to write an email to your boss or your manager or the HR department asking him or her for special consideration. Now, some notes. Do not make reference to real names, companies, people or products. Use generic name for things and common names for people or simply use alphabet letters or numbers, alphanumeric, whatever. Invent email addresses like ben.apple at a similar company.com. Remember to remove the auto hyperlink, otherwise you'll be sending you'll be sending uh, emails automatically to fake addresses. However, try and be as true to your line of work as possible so that you can practice writing an email that may actually occur. The Google Drive document is only accessible to the four members of your business English course group and of course the teacher. But do not add your emails to the Google document until the teacher asks you to do so. And that will happen during the face-to-face -face class. You can add images to your emails too. As for example, a similar product image, etc. Whatever. You can also use an email format to make it look as real as possible. Or you can write the email and send it to yourself, then print it or save it as a PDF. I hope this has been clear and it's um, basically for those that missed coming to class 
this week. This has been another audio tutorial prepared by Nevis Teresi for Pegasus One Italy. Signing off till next time. Thank you for listening.